everybody, happy 2019. This is Meredith Miller with Inner Integration. Today, the topic I have for you is, how is it that narcissists and psychopaths seem to really get you? Like they really seem to understand you. You know, supposedly they have no empathy. They really can't, you know, connect with people in any kind of healthy emotional way. So how did they know you so well? I want to give you my theory around this on the why and how they do this, and then give you some tips toward the end on how you can protect yourself from falling into that trap as you meet someone like this. So I think there's kind of three different layers or ways that they go about this. The first one being the interview. And that's everything verbal that you're saying from the first point you start to connect with them, whether you meet them online and you're writing or you meet them in person and you're talking or you're talking on the phone or texting or whatever's going on verbally. And what they're doing is they're kind of taking this inventory of your likes, your dislikes, your vulnerabilities, what really matters to you, and they're gonna use that information as further leverage against you. All of that's kind of getting classified away. The second layer is what I would call the study, and that's everything non-verbal that you're saying, which is the majority of what you're saying. It's probably 65 to 75% of the communication that we give is nonverbal. And so I think they're, they're kind of setting this to sense, what are your fears? What are your insecurities? Uh, you know, how, how much do you believe in yourself and what you're saying? All of that's very clear through body language. Even if they've never actually studied that, it seems that they have this finely tuned to pick up on that. And then the third layer is what I would call the unexplainable. This is like when you're like, how the hell did they know that? Like they seem to know impossible things about you. How does that happen? Honestly, I think that it has something to do with maybe the collective unconscious of the dark forces. So it's kind of like, they're like drones coming from this central control. So the central control being whatever the dark forces of the universe is. You know, you can call it a satanic force. Some people call this the Jezebel spirit. I'm not really familiar with the Bible, but some people will comment about that. Uh, some other people call them archons or something. It's like an energetic philosophy. Whatever you want to call that, there seems to be this dark force in the universe. And so it, it's kind of like that force works through them without them even realizing it. It's how they have this psychic connection to you and honing in on your vulnerabilities without them even knowing things. And I think this also explains when you look into their eyes and they're not there. Like, you know how sometimes they're there and they got the Jekyll and the Hyde thing, but it's like sometimes they're present there, like their soul is in their body. And then other times it's like they've been soul scalped they're not there, something else is there coming through their eyes and you see that. You know there's some kind of demonic force coming through them, however you want to describe that. So I think these are the three layers of how they're extracting this information and they're able to read you without having empathy. Now I want to talk about why. So I think the most important thing for them in doing this process is to get you to open up to get you to trust them and to get you to need them. So they wanna create some kind of dependency on them. That creates the codependent relationship when you are in a relationship with someone that you need for whatever reason, you're in a codependent relationship versus a healthy relationship where you're with someone because you just want to be. You have all your needs met, they have their needs met, but you want to be together. That's a healthy relationship. So it seems like they come into your life like they're everything you ever dreamed of, you know? So this could be, what we tend to find is the male predators will come in meeting all of the woman's emotional needs and her financial needs. Those tend to be the two areas of a woman's life where she needs the most from other people if she hasn't worked those things out herself, okay? So I'm not saying that all women do that. And I'm also suggesting, and I'll get to those tips at the end about how you build that stuff up for yourself so you don't have those needs and those vulnerabilities. Now, the female predators will tend to use, will tend to play on fulfilling the sexual needs of a man and their significance needs. So a man needs to feel significant. He needs to feel important. 
And so she will make him feel this way at the beginning. And so all of this creates this sort of need, a dependency, and also a trust, which then gets you to open up more. So they're also going to show you how much they're like you. They want to create commonality, and studies have shown that commonality creates trust. Uh, so they found that you know one of the most common things is, say you're traveling somewhere around the world and you run into someone who's from where you're from, you know your city or your town, or maybe you're somewhere far away in the world and they're from your country. And it's almost like this instant bond you have with those people because you have that commonality. Right. So they will do that. They will mirror you and they may or may not actually have some things in common with you, but they will definitely play those up and they will even exaggerate on things that they don't actually believe or feel or have in their life in order to make you trust them more. And then finally, they will sniff out your vulnerabilities. So using those three tactics that I talked about at the beginning, they're sniffing out your vulnerabilities, which first they're going to love bomb and then they're going to devalue and then they're going to go back and forth and flip those back and forth. So for example, if you are lonely and they sniff that out and they realize you don't feel heard, you don't feel seen, you don't feel like you matter. So what they're going to do is they're going to make you feel like you're heard. You're going to feel like, oh my God, this person hears me and sees me like no one ever has. You know, I finally found my match. Um, and you're going to feel very validated. If you have a rejection wound, what they're going to do is make you feel accepted, make you feel wanted. And, you know, that's going to feel very comfortable to you if you're coming from that vulnerability of feeling rejection. So, you know, this is tricky because you want to be in a relationship with someone who gets you. Like, that's a normal thing. We all want that. Like, who wants to be in a relationship with someone who doesn't get you? Like, you just, you don't understand each other. It's like you're speaking Chinese and they're speaking English and you guys just aren't meeting anywhere. You aren't able to connect in that way. So I think we all want to be with someone who gets us. I think that's normal. I think that it may not be immediately obvious when you meet these predators that they're faking that because remember some of them are very very covert sometimes it could be very obvious at the beginning but other times they're very covert it might take you three four weeks maybe even a couple months to really figure that out when they're really skilled at that so i want to give you some tips on some things that you can do for yourself so that you don't fall into that trap because like i said it is tricky because we are all looking for someone who really gets us but we want to be careful and notice like is that for real so the first tip i have is have zero expectations don't expect people to be anything don't expect them to be the love of your life the mate you've always dreamed of your future husband or wife like you don't know them so having zero expectations is a white board and it allows people to reveal themselves. Having zero expectations gives people that space to reveal who they are. <clears throat> and then when you don't have those expectations, you're much more able to see them when they do reveal themselves. So another thing you want to have are standards and boundaries because these are like narc repellent. When you have standards and boundaries, they don't like that. They're looking for an easy target. They're looking for someone who doesn't put up much resistance. If they notice you have high standards, like, you know, people need to respect you, you value yourself, you respect yourself, you love yourself, you're not going to put up with any kind of bullshit because you're willing to walk away. And that's another thing is you've got to be willing to walk away. So if you walk into that relationship and you're like, oh my God, this is everything I ever dreamed of, how willing are you going to be to walk away at the first sign of manipulation and something isn't right here? Uh, so self-trust is another area because self-trust is like kryptonite for narcs. Because when you trust yourself, their games just don't work. Their lies don't work. Their gaslighting doesn't work. Maybe they get away with a few small things in the first few weeks, but they're going to reveal themselves very quickly because you trust yourself. And they can also sniff that out. That's part of that non-verbal thing. They can see, is your body language in alignment with what you're saying? Do you really believe in yourself? You know, or when, when something questionable comes up, how much do you trust yourself versus how much are you placing that trust outside yourself? Another thing is 
slow sharing over time. So this is, it is a boundary, but it's a specific kind of boundaries. Be very careful what you're sharing with people when you first meet them. You don't want to share your whole life story. You don't want to share really vulnerable things with them. You don't want to share your biggest fears and insecurities with them because you don't know if they're trustworthy yet. So allow people to earn your trust over time and to open up a little more and a little more each time. You want to kill the fantasy. That's the fantasy of Prince Charming or what would be the female equivalent, equivalent of that? Princess Charming? You know, kill that fantasy of this ideal person who's going to come into your life and be everything you ever dreamed of. Like, remember, we're all humans here. Okay, so expect that we're all humans. Kill that fantasy of like, oh my God, my soulmate kind of thing. I'm not saying you can't have an amazing connection with someone, but you want to be careful about that fantasy because that fantasy could cause you to see something that's not there. You know, so keep your feet on the ground. Another one is no self-blame. So I think it's really easy to start blaming yourself. You know, maybe you knew this person for a few weeks or maybe even a few months and then all of a sudden they revealed themselves. Not your fault. Don't blame yourself for that. You know, you couldn't have known that at the very beginning because the person was very covert. You allowed them to reveal themselves, they revealed themselves. As soon as you saw it, you cut it off. You did good there, that's called a victory. You wanna celebrate that, so don't blame yourself on that. And another really important thing is to meet your own needs. So remember, you know, if you have a financial need, if you have an emotional need, a sexual need, a significance need, a something other need that I didn't explain, whatever need it is that you have in your life, you've got to feel that for yourself. You've got to be at the point where you're taking care of, you're loving yourself, you're caring for yourself, and someone else comes in, it's like your glass is already full. They come in and now your glass is overflowing. It's not that your glass is halfway down or even three quarters up or worse yet, one quarter down there. You filled your glass yourself, therefore you're willing to walk away. You're not going to put up with any kind of bullshit. And a healthy relationship is where there isn't that need. There's a want. There's a true desire to be with that person because your life is just that much better with them in it and vice versa. So another kind of filter to give you a reality check around this, when you're just meeting someone and you're not really sure, do they really get you or is this kind of fake? Look at, you know, what do they really get you when it comes to the big things? Like when it really, really matters, when it's uncomfortable conversations, really important things, disagreements, do they really get you in that moment? It doesn't mean you have to agree. That's a narcissistic concept, which means you have to agree with me, you know, and everybody else has to agree with me. When someone is forcing you to agree with them and they refuse to agree to disagree, that's a toxic person. You don't want to have people like that in your life. So if they, if they can't handle a disagreement or they can't handle talking about big stuff, they run away, they stonewall you, they sweep it under the carpet or pretending it doesn't matter, that person doesn't get you. That's not a safe person. Maybe not necessarily a narcissist, could just be someone emotionally unavailable, could be someone cowardly who's unable to step up to that plate. And if they can't connect with you on the big stuff, that is not someone you want on your team. Because look, life has, life has stuff that comes up, right? Stuff is always going to come up. You want to have someone on your team who's really by your side, who even if you don't agree on everything, you guys are going to figure out how to get through there. You're going to figure out how to talk about it and how to work it out. So these are my tips for you today on this topic of you know why and how the narcissist and psychopath really seems to get you. I want to suggest that you guys come check out the Inner Integration podcast if you haven't subscribed yet. We always have new content up there every other week. So every other week we have a video on YouTube and on the other weeks we have a new podcast episode. You can find that on iTunes or Stitcher. The links are in the video description below. Please join us on Facebook if you haven't already and also Instagram where you get daily content to help you integrate the content that I put out in the bi-weekly videos. I'm sending you all a big hug and many blessings of abundance in this new year.